What's up, nerds? God's Master here, aka G to the Three, with another Magic the Gathering puzzle quest. Today's quest can we go beat Avison's Madness? What's the keys to it? How do we play it? How do we get maximum points from Avison's Madness? And the bottom line is what are some of your deck recommendations and cards to be able to play? to go as high point collecting as we possibly can in this event. Now, in this event, contrary to popular belief, there is a, per a perfect score you can qualify for, but the way the event is set up is every node has, an most of the nodes have objectives that you are either or completing. If you don't know what this is, there's coalitions that you can wind up being part of. Coalitions are a lot of fun. You get to join a team of up to 20 other, or 19 other players, or so for a total of 20. And you guys collectively play on weekend events, and the higher your team ranks in said events, you both have individual prizes. Uh, so I'm platinum tier, of course, baby. So individual prizes, I can get 25, 50, so that's 75, that's 150 gold. I uh, get a few packs as well, and a few runes, or crystal, or yeah, runes. And in the group deal, if you place the first one or two, you get 100 gold. Okay, you get uh, crystals. And you get a fat pack, ooh, baby, of old school cards. What's funny is people who are able to rank first and second usually don't need the fat packs. We typically have all of the old uh, cards. We have a full, complete legacy collection. However, um, even if you place top 100, which I was in a top tier coalition before, and then three of us uh, from that group got really tired of playing every weekend. And frankly, the events got really lax. Well. The events need to be adjusted. These aren't enough prizes for us to grind our tails off, frankly, every weekend and take time away from our families that way. But they are a lot of fun, especially if you're a newer player and you want to rank up and you want to scoop rewards. So we formed a secondary group and all of a sudden we just found ourselves playing again um, in these co uh, in the coalition events. And we were just, you know, we're really competitive. Me and Ariel, Ariel's one of the other members and Elmo's on the same group as well. And what we wind up doing is when we wind up playing those events, me, I get very competitive. I'm always chasing Ariel. Ariel's always just a few points better than me. He's a good dude. So what I wind up doing is I wound up, we wound up realizing, hey, we're placing pretty high on these. Uh, we started inviting people to come play with us super casually. And as a result, what wound up happening was that we actually, uh, we placed top 100. So for us just doing what we're normally going to do anyways, we took ourselves from the, you know, the 250 to 500 range, which is 30 crystals, all the way up to the 51st <laughs> to 100 range, which gives us 30 crystals. Like I said, they really need to do stuff to improve the, the bonuses and the prizes. But it's really neat watching a lot of these other kids who are, are young pups. I call them young because I'm, I'm probably older than a lot of folks who play this game. Uh, but to watch these these newer players be able to scoop some really good prizes, get some new cards and add to their packs they didn't have before, and why not? It qualifies us for typically a little bit better bonuses, and they get to scoop some really awesome prizes. So that said, Avacyn's Madness. Let's get to it. Let's join the event, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Platinum's here, baby. All right, we're going to look at it. And the way it's structured is, this is important to note. Tip number one, there are five sections of three. So there are 15 different groups or 15 different nodes, I should say, or different uh, combats you're going to be doing during this event. The way it wins is you see the bar up at the top where it says 98%. People have already been playing against Avacyn, and what they're doing is they're fighting uh, the boss. And when the boss reaches 0% in life, then that means the game is over. And you'll also see underneath the percentile bar, right there, down to the bottom, says end in two, ends in two days, right? And because of that, what winds up happening is, is that that is, if we don't beat the boss by the end of that time frame or before that, time, that timer runs out, well then, the, the event is over. So something to bear in mind as you're going through and doing this. In fact, I just realized I could start pointing at stuff. So right here, see this right here? Boo, this is the ends in two days. There's a 98 dial bar, and then this is the nodes. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to enter each node and you're going to build a deck for it. So this is the, actually it's not the first, this is the first section, and we're gonna go through here. Now, a tip for the first sections, especially if you have a collection that's actually fairly good, uh, you wanna make sure that you're completing the objectives before you do anything else. Beating and winning these nodes is not hard. Completing the objectives before you win can be difficult if you don't pay attention to it. So take 10 or less damage during a single fight, uh, or take 25 or more damage during a single fight. So this becomes easy. I just go pick one of my really OP decks. Uh, from, and you can, another thing is, is you can use Planeswalkers on all of these. You can use the same Planeswalker on every single one of these nodes. So I go grab the biggest, the burliest, the best, the fastest winning one from my deck right now. I call it Legacy Death because this is a legacy event. 
Uh, it's not just standard. It's not just new stuff. It's all the cards in the world. Another thing about this event is this is not you versus other players. These are static. Uh, they're called. It's called PVE. PVE. So it's player versus. I don't know what the E stands for, uh, but it's electronics or, or you know the, their basic build. And I have this deck I call Legacy Death, which is here. Let me show you what's inside this deck. It's Quartzwood Crasher, Deploy the Gatewatch, War of Invention, Omniscience, Hour of Promise, Reason, Nissa's Revelation, Rishkar's Expertise, Chance for Glory, and Samet, Voice of Descent. So there's often a debate between what's better, Deploy the Gatewatch decks or Omniscience decks. And uh, Tamio says, yes, <laughs> she's done the research, and she says, I completely concur. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter there, Legacy Death. Uh, let's go beat this bad boy, and then we want to win the objectives here very, very quickly. All right, so as you can see, this boss man's got 33 life, and my hand is pretty janky already. I mean, it's basically just go win the event kind of level, so let's do the thing. Uh, yep, yeah, let's just go there. Doesn't require a lot of thought, just win before you take any damage. And that's basically, if I get some spells here on the next turn, I win the game. Let's see. And he got a heck of a drop, of course. And his extra ability is, uh, his power is, what is his power? Uh, summon a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. Um, I got reason. I got all kinds of reasons. Let's see if any of them make me any difference. Rishkar's expertise, chance for glory. I get another turn, which means I get to collect some of that stuff that goes on. And we don't draw an extra deal. Now, what I can do with Tamiyo is I can draw two cards. So I can minimize their power, make them weak draw some cards, and normally this deck would already have won. I'm, I'm really upset that it's taking as long as it has. That's all right. We're just going to go here. We're going to get an extra swap here in just a second. There's more Omniscience, more Whirr. There's Deploy, and that should be game. Haste, double haste, double strike, and a big critter, and we can go this way. I don't think we need to do anything else. Let's just go ahead and win the game. Bam, bam, and bam. And that's how it's done. So you can use any deck you'd like. You can use any kind of uh, kill spells to basically keep their creatures off of you until you can get your creatures out big enough to swing and win. That's basically how that wins. Pretty basic. And you can see we wound up qualifying for all of the uh, deals. Actually, as much as we could. Take 10 or less or take 25 or more damage. Continue. All right, so it's going to be an hour and 36 minutes for the second round. So we're going to go through and complete each one of these first ones here, and then we'll shoot another video for part two when that's done. All right, so second deal. Uh, in this one, we want to win the fight with 40 or more hit points remaining, or win the fight with 15 or less hit points remaining. Again, use your most OP deck, the thing that you've got in this deck that wins for you rapidly. This should be very little of a challenge for you, but I'm going to just continue to choose my Legacy Death deck to go through here because achieving this objective is not necessarily about skill or actually doing anything to win the fight different than what you've already done. It's just go win and win as quickly as you can and gain life in the process. I don't know why this is being so wonky right now. Let me choose this one. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Okay, that was looking a little wonky, so I went ahead and paused it and just restarted the app. When you get yourself finding that you're in the app and it's doing anything kind of wonky and you're not in a game, if you are in a game, finish the game, get out of much as you can, you know, make sure you get rewarded your points, and then exit the app. Close the app, go shut it down, and then relaunch the app. Sometimes it gets really wonky. I shut this down, relaunched it, and it winds up working fine now. Again, the objective here, 40 more hit points, let's go get it done. All right, so this is us versus the kiddo here, the demon child. Twins of Mora State, their ability is Alms of the Vein. Deals three damage to your opponent and gain three life. Nothing really major. She's got 61 life there. Big deal. Let's go through, and uh, I'll beat this, and you'll see what it is. All right, so we're at turn, I think, three here. And let's go ahead and go here. And we're going to get her down on the board to get that. And then we're going to get Double Strike and Trample and all that good stuff. I think I already used this ability. Yes, I did. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Go here. Boom. We're going to Double Strike there. Boom. Get Double Strike there. Eight. 
He's not going to have double strike. I think I'm going to take some damage here. Oh, I'm one short. <laughs> ah, if, if she hadn't have killed that other guy, I wouldn't have gone through with that. One short. Look at that. Ah, bummer. All right. That's all right. So here we go. We're just going to go there. Whatever. Let's just win. That's game. Okay. So in this one, that's how you beat that one. Just beat it with over 40 points. Again, I think this is less challenging than the first one because the first one, I couldn't take any damage at all. The second one, it's like, yeah, just we're fine. We're fine. Uh, there we go. So we've completed both those objectives. We're at max points. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so here's uh, level three or, you know, middle whatever it is. Anyways, level 62 lady. Uh, this is Flame Blade Angel. And in the objectives here is kill four or less enemy creatures during a single fight. Kill eight or more enemy creatures. So this is an either or. We're going to go with either. Uh, the first one, I'm actually going to beat this with a popper deck so you guys can see what a popper deck looks like. I have, uh, let's see here. So we're not going to kill creatures with this build. I'm going to use uh, Nissa World Waker. And this deck that I have here is a standard royal song. Uh, now, actually, this isn't my popper deck. Let me grab my, it's, it's a Huadli deck that I have that's completely popper. I'm going to beat it with that so you can see that it's, oh, you just win because it's OP cards. So this is my standard popper deck. Eidolon of Blossoms is another engine. Tome of the Guild Pack, Seasons of Growth, Zendikar Royal, Omen of the Hunt, Leyline of Abundance, uh, Rose Thorn Acolyte. Basically, it's for the conversion. Uh, Elvish Visionary for conversion. Three green gems. Staggering Insight for the life gain. And then Ram Through for some damage. Going to get some damage up in here. So we're going to use her because we're not actually trying to kill a lot of these creatures. We're just trying to get in there and get the win. And at 62, they might have like 100 life. So let's go. And again, this is a common, uncommon, and rare build. And her ability is deal three damage to your opponent and each of their creatures on the battlefield. So she can do a flame sweep across the board and wind up wiping us out. That's exactly the hand we want. Um, and we basically just go through and let's see, what's the best drop to get here? This is definitely a green white deck. We want to get to our first ability as quickly as possible. Actually, that might be best. It is. Look at here. Somebody look at here. I made a good choice. Yeah. Every time she hits the board, uh, an enchantment or an aura that gets played, you convert three to green on the board and you draw a card. So she's a nice little engine in and of herself with ley line of abundance on top of that. You wind up getting some good stuff to go through with that. Do we have some green? Yep. And we want to trigger her first ability so that every time we do green and white, uh, we wind up getting loyalty, like tons and tons of loyalty in our DNA. And then we go from there, which we still haven't triggered yet, which I'm very vexed by. All right, so we're going to take this ro seasonal virtue, uh, seasonal ritual, rather. We're going to go convert some jemmy gems, uh, white and green. That's my blue. Blue is flat. Blue and red are flat, but that's fine. Let's go here. There we go. That's good. Good, good, good. Conversion city, baby. We go on ham on this. Yep, we're going to confirm. We're going to convert some more to green. Get some more conversion. And this deck steamrolls pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, dude's going to transform here in a minute if she doesn't play anything. Yep, converts. Uh, no, he didn't. I wonder how he turns. Seneca Royal, we're going to go ahead and get our Radiant Blessings out on the board as quickly as possible. And we're looking for strictly green and white, my friends. Green and white so we can get all that loyalty to get our triggered up to our third ability. Because once that happens, that makes big headway for us. Uh, there's 10. We're smash. All right. Oh, she used her ability. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Come on, man. All right, here we go. Let's see what do we got. I should have Omen in here too. Oh, Season of Growth, I need up here. Let's go here. And we want green and white. I'm not seeing green and white. What is this? What is that? Oh, no, I don't want that. Let's do blue then. It's red. Let you convert some green. Is it enough? No. Come on, man. It's a race. Let's go. Now, what I would do with this, if I have Song of Creation, which I do have, or if you have Song of Creation, I'd throw it into this deck. It makes it really sing. Um, another, There's some uh, uh, some mythics that uh, they're, they have overflow. So when you actually draw them into your hand, you're able to use them to go do some other spiffy stuff. And I would use Ruinous Ultimatum as well. Now, this is really the trigger we've been waiting for. There it is. Let's go, baby. Come on. 
And we want to get some lifelink on her so that we can start to counteract some of the stuff they're doing. And that'll off-put. Basically, think of life gain as reducing their creature's power. So they have a 7, 6, 3, so that's 16. Um, so we're going to be gaining 15 life for their 16 damage. So we're really only going to be, well, now it's uh, 17 damage. We're going to take seven. We're going to take two points of damage for every turn that goes by um, from their efforts with our life gain, and we're going to make that bigger still. And Omen of the Hunt is up here. We like that. We like those. We're actually going to do that. And I'm going to ditch Ram through because I'm not trying to kill any creatures. Although I would love to destroy their creatures right now, I'll just use that in a pinch <laughs> so we get more Ram through. Of course, uh, use that third ability. We confirm, convert. That's what we want. They do that. Uh, can I get a landfall? Do I want to destroy that? No, I do not. So we're going to go here. You want to leave your grouped greens together as much as possible so that when something comes on the board and all the conversions happen, you're able to get something to convert. All right. Oh, come on now. You got to give me something. 21... And my life gain is going to way outstrip her ability to do damage to me. Let's go. I set her up with a 5 attack, but that's all right. Next turn I win. And I have full health. And I killed no critters, yes? All right. I get the 5 swap. Get to go ham. There's Rendicoil. Now, here's something else, too, that I want to show you. I'm not going to use that. If I use her third ability, oh, well, actually, I take that back. I was thinking of, um, uh, you can use this build, too, with, uh, uh, what's her face? Um, World Waker. And actually, I think I like World Waker uh, good for this combo as well, because then I can use her third ability. Uh, not now, bro. And it winds up creating a bigger creature with haste and trample. And that's a great finishing move. This one just helps you cycle through your deck as quickly as possible. But that's all right. It's game. Come on. Finish, finish, finish. Uh, no, we're just win. Just win. Boom. That's game. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we got some experience and we got the first two levels there. Let's move on. All right. There we go. All right. So now we're onto the fourth node. And the fourth node is a level 102 critter. So he's going to be pretty big. Take 15 or less damage during a single fight. This is where if you're building a popper build or if you're building something with a few less cards, this is where defense is really important. You want to actually have some traps set for them. There's some good traps set as far as disabling. If you just go through um, and you pick, a, let's say, any any Planeswalker. Um, I'll, I'll pick a, let's pick a tricolor guy here. Let's do, um, let's do this guy. We're going to go in here. We're going to go to card pool. We're going to say disable is the keyword. Disable. Hit enter. We're going to go on supports. And in this case, I'm actually even going to spell disable correctly. Because <laughs> that will help. That will help. So, time of ice, um, high alert. Let's actually go ahead and go for some rares and some commons and commons. Claustrophobia is a good one, except the, the shield is one, and that's a pretty common one. Charmed sleep is another. Uh, while the support's on the board, the first opposing creature is disabled whenever your opponent casts a spell. Destroy the support. Uh, so it goes from there. Uh, Prism Array is a really great card. It's a rare. Anytime they landfall, the first creature your opponent controls is disabled till the beginning of your next turn, and you draw three cards. I love that card. That goes into my frequent builds as far as um, uh, some are concerned. I don't have white here. White is notoriously known for disable, so let's go pick a Planeswalker that has that. Here I've got Tamio. Let's go build out a disable. Okay, so Tamio's disability, if I actually just go and select white as well, that way we're not, oh, and then we want to do uh, lower tier stuff. So steal away, Seal Away is actually one of my favorite ones. While the support's on the board, the first creature your opponent controls is disabled, but if you have a historic creature, on the, a card on the board, not even a creature, but if you have a, like a, any kind of legendary artifact or anything like that, uh, you disable the first two creatures in your opponent's control instead. This is a really good card from uh, Dominaria. Love that card. It's very effective. Pacifism is another one. It disables the first creature when the support's on the board. The first opposing creature is disabled. When an opposing non-disabled creature is reinforced, destroy the support. So they have to cast a secondary creature. There's a ton of these cards. Um, the most effective is Suppression Bonds, uh, which is an enchantment which can be done. And then there's another. Actually, I think it's a Mythic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Mythic, uh, which is a Hyxus Prison Warden. 
Uh, when an opposing creature at combat uh, uh, deals combat damage to your planeswalker, that creature is disabled as long as this card is in play. When the support is exiled or destroyed, enable all opposing creatures. That's one approach. If you have black creatures, you have a lot of destroy fa uh, uh, options available to you. So if we go pick Bolas, uh, let's see, where is the Bolases? We'll just pick this Bolas and we just say destroy. In fact, what you want to do is you want to have destroy and flash. And you want to do two things with this. So what these are, false memories, destroy the top seven cards of target player's library. No, that's not it. E to extinction. Exile target opposing creature. If you can't exile an opposing vanguard support, then destroy the first card with buried from your library. This is important. If you're going for objectives that say do not kill creatures, exile is not destroy. If you exile them, it eliminates the threat from the board, but it doesn't, do any, it doesn't count as a destruction. Now here we're going for... We're trying to not take any damage. So this is great because I can mute this thing. I can hit this little bar right here. Boop, 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 boop. I can hit that when it's in my hand. And that way when the creatures attack, this thing can actually trigger while the attack. It's an ugly picture, isn't it? Oh my gosh, it gives me nightmares. Exile target opposing creature. If you can't exile an opposing vanguard support, then destroy the first card with buried from your library. Very powerful card. Any of these would work for that. There's several of them. Ultimate price, destroy target creature, its controller loses two life, um, et cetera, et cetera. Murder is probably one of the OG ones, and it's an uncommon in seven. It's really inexpensive, really effective. But these are one-for-one -one creature removals. One of my favorite um, exile cards that's out there, let's do exile. I just adore this card. I think it's really good. Consecrate, but it's actually consumed. So for nine mana, you destroy the first creature your opponent controls, with the greatest power, then gain life equal to that creature's power. So what's the, why this is important is because if they have Gaia's Revenge, you can't target that. But this doesn't do targeting. It takes the first creature and eliminates it. Now, for this objective specifically, because we're trying to take 16 or less damage, we want to make stuff. We, we, we want to get something that might move a little bit faster. Now, I'm pretty sure this thing isn't using anything that runs haste, but we'll see here in a minute. I'm just going to grab an OG deck, a really powerful deal, that I already have, and I'm just gonna go run it because for me, it's a matter of winning and controlling the board. And one of the, my favorite ways to run this board, let's see if this is the legacy deck that does it. Uh, Reason we're of Invention, Apex. Uh, does it do Ruinous Ultimatum? It does not, but it has a pretty fast build. And if I'm gonna do that, which is faster? I think I will go with, is it Legacy Death? I think I'm gonna go Legacy Death. Let's just do it. Let's just go run the gamut with this thing. Take 15 or less damage, take 60 or more damage. So this is an either or objective, so we want to take less damage. So we're going to go run this deck. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is... Who's this critter? This is Awoken Horror. And horror so woke, it's a woken. Summon two 2-2 two, two black zombie tokens. All right, not that big a deal. Nothing too elaborate. Looks like we have what we need here. I'm not going to go there. And uh, I've got a five drop. And do I have another five drop? Nope, I do have blue and upping my deal. So here we go, we're ready for turn two. All right, so here we are in turn three. And I think I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take an extra turn. And I wanna be able to fill up my mana as quickly as possible. I wanna fill up my loyalty as quickly as possible, rather. And that's one of the good things about uh, Legacy. Legacy has some of the best conversion that's out there. Rishkar's uh, expertise is so damn good. The, it's basically convert, I think, three or one for every card in your hand times three or something like that. It's redonkulous. Basically wipe the board. And if I don't have anything that I'm actively using that stuff for, it fills my hand up. Um, and in this case, uh, I'm going to ditch that. Uh, now, do I want to ditch that? Uh, well, no, we don't want to take any damage, so we can't do that. We can't run that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do twofold. I'm going to do this and this, and I'm going to run that. Yes. That should convert enough. Okay, good, it did. Got lucky. It was luck. It was a little bit of luck. And what I'm trying to do here is get uh, at least to fire off. Do I have enough? Does it work? Um, there's that. Doesn't have trample. 
Next turn I should win. As long as he doesn't do anything goofy, I shouldn't die. He's got an extra swap, though. That doesn't do anything. Does three. Okay. All right, now here we go. Did I get another conversion? I did. And I want these two, but I'm going to do this as well. Since I can do this now, that triggers. I'll go there. I'll go there. And I don't have enough room, so i got to ditch something. Let's ditch, let's ditch you, because so we're going to get plenty of critters here. I want to use my third ability. There's Rish Cars, and we want to use her up front. And we want to ditch Hour of Promise all the way to the bottom, so that it triggers the next load of cards that wind up coming. We're going to go there. And this should be game. And that's a good thing about Rish Cars, is it'll fill your whole hand up. Um, that's why we try to put, and what I should have done was put my... Um, uh, put my uh, War of Inventions towards the bottom so that they last longer. I'm not just using them to cast cards. I don't need to. I've already done all that. I think this is game. Yes, that's game. Just win. All right, here we go. One. Boom. Two. Boom. Three. <laughs> Boom. And game. We don't even use my token to win. We just win. It's good. It's good. All right, completed objectives. One, and we are still on full power. Almost perfect through round one. All right, qualified for 25 crystals. I'm trying to get to 3,000 right chow so that I can go and have uh, to at least 10 packs. I'm going to be able to open up for you guys. All right, here we are, level five. Now, these nodes are a little more serious. You actually want to look at these a little more hardcore. So the objectives here are take 25 or less damage during a single fight, take 90 or more damage. So this is still an either or, but this guy's going to have a little more ability to get stuff done. I'm still going to run the same deck because I think the deck wins fast enough that I can actually wind up beating them in a couple of turns. Um, the only adjustment I'm going to make to this deck, though, is I want some creature removal just in case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Legacy Death board up here, go up here, and... Um, what do I want to take out? What do I want to take out? I want to take out... I'm going to take out you, and I'm going to add... What spell do I want to use? What kind of magic spell to use? Slimes and snails, or puppy dog tails, thunder or lightning, and Gosmaster says... Where's Ruinous? <laughs> Uh, there it is. Ruinous. Ruinous ultimatum. Ruinous ultimatum. There it is. We'll run that. You didn't sign up for this, did you? You probably unsubscribed. Don't do that. Subs okay, so dude has 256 hit points. My goodness. Uh, he has summoned two 1-1 one -one red devil tokens. Not that big a deal, but they can move quickly. And so we want to keep this charged. But in the meantime, when we have a chance, we want to win a Sapriel. So we just want to get in there and get this done. Uh, let's see, is there anything in here we want to do? Um, yeah, let's go here. Red, bam, bam, and we're going to go from there. All right, I'm going to pause this because it's going to take a minute. All right, so here we go where he's starting to beef himself up and he's starting to do some damage. Oh, my gosh, he did like six points of damage to me, didn't he? All right, so I'm still plenty under that 25, but he can get out of hand really, really quickly. So what I want to do right now is I don't want this dude... Actually, I do want that to go off. <laughs> I want that to go off a little bit, but I have a I have a double stamp here. You don't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. You don't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. Well, I do, sir. I do. And I want to get another Ruinous in my hand as quickly as possible. I want to get it charged up. So it's just sitting purdy. How do we do that? By her third ability, that's how. We go get that stuff. We get it, man. We get it. All right? We do the thing, senors and senoras. We go down here. Uh, let's do this one here. No, let's do this one here. And let's go from there. Bam, blue. Green should fill most of my hand up. Fills my hand up. So good. So good. And this is going to go for a minute. It's a cycle. It's a, it's a deal. So I gained that six life back, but that doesn't negate the fact that I took the six damage. So it just keeps me from dying just in case Senior Goofy Pants over here goes on a roll. So this is going to take a second. I'm going to let this thing roll. Look at, look at, isn't that beautiful? Cascades. Cascades as far as the eye can see. Oh, I should have let you see the damage payout because it's all worth everything. Actually, never mind. This wins. 
that's the game exactly exactly as I, I, I thought of it. That's how I planned it. Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest is easy, my friends. You just cascade into success. That's how it rolls. All right, so we took six damage into that. We got 30 points. That's coalition points and personal points. We got rewards for three, three, and it's always three, always two on the second and third, uh, um, or the objectives. So that's usually how that rolls. At anywho, let's go on. We did it. All righty, so there we go. We got some runes. There we are. We're complete. The next set will be available in an hour or so. I'm going to run into Costco and go grab some stuff. But in the meantime, I uh, hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, cards you have questions about, ways that you can optimize for that. Really, when you're trying to reach objectives that are you know, not taking any damage, especially against some of those bigger creatures with so many hit points, man, it's, it's brutal. Really, though, there are so many Planeswalkers and so many things available to you in the card pool that you can have in Legacy that allow you to be able to disable them. They're from pretty much every set. So work on those disability uh, cards <laughs> or go use elimination cards <laughs> uh, and basically use those to be able to protect yourself so you can get your creatures in there strong enough to wind up winning. There's a tons of different combos in there. I'd love to hear what combos you're using to go uh, flawless in those uh, no damage nodes. Comment below. Let me know. And listen, if you're not a, a subscriber or a follower of this, I, I, if you like this content, let me know because I'm producing this content free of will. Doesn't cost anything to you guys. And bottom line is, is that it really helps the channel out and gets viewers out there to see this stuff. If we like, comment, and subscribe, get the notifications as well. That way, every time I put a video out, you can see the stuff that's going on. And what deck, what cards do you have, or what planeswalkers are you working with? You want some assistance with that? I could offer some suggestions for you guys on. Comment below, let me know. And as always, I appreciate you, man. You could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to spend the last 32 minutes here with me, and it's appreciated. Like, subscribe, and until the next quest, I'll see you at level two for Avison's Madness, baby. Let's get her done. See you there. Go flawless. Bye.